Hello everybody, this is HG Shapes here. I'm back with another video. I hope this video finds you well. And as usual, how's the weather where you are? Here, we're starting to do that up and down thing, which uh, it tends to do here in the spring and fall months. Um, we had beautiful 70 degree, 70 degree sunny weather maybe a week or two ago, and now yesterday we were um, down to like a high of freezing basically during the day and much colder during the night. So go figure, but it's warming up this weekend and it's looking like we'll have a nice weekend of spring weather ahead. So before I forget, very quickly, I did want to share and announce the winner of the Mountain Laurel Soap Aftershave set that uh, all you had to do was write I'm in in the previous video. Sorry if you missed that. But anyway, let's go ahead and pick the winner now. Congratulations to Chris, who is the winner. So Chris, if you're watching, uh, please send me an email with your address and I'll get this out to you. My email is hdshaves, all one word, at gmail. I always include it in the descriptions of these videos when I remember also, in case any of you want to send me an email for some reason. So great job, Chris. Uh, I picked that using a random YouTube comment picker thing and I you know, put the screenshot in there so you all could see. So that's that. Um, let's talk about the soap today, which is uh, very exciting. We have Sterling Soap Co. Varen. So the theme for today's shave is kind of using two brands that are everywhere in wet shaving, are both kind of budget friendly. But unfortunately, I haven't really reviewed too much in this channel. Um, I've reviewed only one Sterling soap in the past. Or I've reviewed a couple of uh, Yaki brushes in the past, but never a razor. So that's kind of the theme. So quick uh, flag pop quiz. Do you know what this is a flag of? It is uh, of, the, of Holland, of the Netherlands, because the soap was made for a Dutch forum called Shaving Society. And if any of the Shaving Society members are watching, hello. Um, I always get this flag when I see Red, white, and blue, obviously you think of the US or I think France, but this is Holland. And they called it Varen because Varen is the Dutch word for fern. So this is a powerful fougere in the mutton tallow base, which some sterling soaps that are in the mutton base, it's pretty obvious because it's got a sheep on it. But in this case, you just have to look at the ingredients and the first ingredient is mutton tallow and not beef tallow. Um, this soap, as I said, very strongly scented, so keep that in mind. Um, this can kind of linger with you all day in some capacity, in my experience. And it does have the kind of dankness of a traditional fougere that I'm accustomed to, but it also has um, a very sweet note to it. Almost smells like citrus, but from looking at the notes, I didn't see too many citruses. And then also there's a distinct spicy note that kind of reminds me of Old Spice a little bit. And that is something that I'm not, um, accustomed to smelling in fougeres. Um, this is what the soap looks like. Uh, it's not been used very much at all. And um, anyway, so it's an interesting scent in that way, um, in that while it does have the dankness of the fougere, it's got some other stuff going on too that's interesting. Um, so while this was an exclusive um, for the sha for Shaving Society, it eventually came out for the public not too long thereafter. And it's an interesting soap because they worked on it for years. Um, from what I understand, it was a lot of back and forth between the members of the forum and Rod of Sterling. They were just going back and forth for a long time and eventually it was delivered. And also what I heard, which was just interesting, um, I heard that all the people that were involved in this, you know, group buy, basically, they were all, you know, happy with it. Um, from the word I heard used was unanimous, right? They were all happy about it. So that's something. Okay, so that's the soap. For the razor, I was enabled to buy this Yaki half DE SE razor from Michael Friedberg. Uh, he messaged me a couple days before he did his live shave with it, which, uh, which I believe was his most recent live shave video. So if you go to his channel, he's using this razor. And he messaged, he messaged me before that just to say like, hey man, I use this razor again, surprisingly good. Maybe you should consider it. And um, you know, it was nine bucks shipped for the head and it's hard to argue with that, you know. Um, so here it is. Uh, I will admit up front that there is seemingly no inherent benefit to doing this half DE thing. It is kind of a gimmick. Um, you know, you could very easily just have a DE razor and it would function the same, except it has two sides. So 
what's the need for a single? Who knows? But I, the reason why I got this is because even though it did seem gimmicky, I was also convinced that it could be a very good razor. As Michael said, you know, uh, Michael used it for a couple weeks straight and had fantastic results with it. And so I thought, well, I should try it for myself. Um, and it is a little bit strange to assemble the razor, especially the first couple times when you get used to it. And so I did a little clip of how to assemble it. So check this out. I thought I'd show you how to assemble this razor real quick. It's a little bit strange. Uh, make sure you have your half DE blade and that you've snapped it in half, hopefully safely inside the wrapper. You push it up against the top cap there and then you put the base plate on with the Yaki symbol facing out, check it, make sure the blade looks good, and then you screw in your handle. Um, it's really obvious to me if this razor is not lined up properly. And, and yeah, that's uh, pretty much the most complicated part, just getting it together. But then once you get it together, the blade looks about like that. And um, it, it, you know, again, it's very obvious to me if the blade is askew, uh, it's like really you know, badly so. And so then you just start over and eventually you get it right. Um, this is a nice handle from, from Yaki. I, I believe it's chrome plated brass. And this is a surprisingly sharp knurling here. Um, it's been very effective in use and uh, I've enjoyed the handle. I forget what this is called on their site, but um, I know they have different colors for the um, knurling. So that's the razor, which we'll be talking about more. Well, it just went on its side, that's okay. Um, and then I've had sitting in the water, this is the Yaki rainbow synthetic, which has been out for years. And um, I think a lot of people have had this brush. This was also one that Michael really liked and he had been talking to me about, you know, months and months ago. And so I figured, eh, why not? Let's try it. Um, the main thing with this handle is that as one of my friends like to call it, it is a little bit of a trailer hitch handle <laughs> in that uh, it's pretty bulky. Um, but it's, for me, it's been very comfortable to hold and use and I think the resin is surprisingly nice on this, the way the light hits it. Um, and this brush was cheap, you know, it was 15 bucks or something. And um, let's just say I've seen brushes much more, probably 10 times as, as expensive as this that look worse and are less functional than, than this. So that is something to be said about uh, Yaki and their products. I mean, so, some of them, not all of them. Um, okay. That's the intro. I'm gonna let my face and start uh, loading the soap and I'll bring you in for that. So we're gonna begin loading the soap here. My thing with this brush and soap this week um, is I always found myself wanting to add more water in the loading stage, which, you know, you can do that. Like I just simply would add it straight to the puck. Um, but to me, I would rather just start with a wetter brush um, and kind of see if it can come together on its own. Um, and so that's what I've done today. I've started with more water in the brush than usual because I think this base can take it. And, you know, worst thing that happens is it's too frothy and I have to go back and get some extra soap. Um, it's not gonna be a huge issue. I've also been trying not to totally um, overload this brush because it is a synthetic and it's gonna distribute uh, lather better than an animal hair brush. And so I think we're gonna start with about that much. I'm gonna put a little more water on it because it was getting a little pasty there near the end. And then let's just see if we can make this happen. And let me just say that there is nothing quite as satisfying as doing a little synth face mashing, as we like to say. Now, of course, you should treat your brushes with care and you don't wanna uh, shorten their life expectancy, but I'm not really worried about it. If this brush falls apart, that's okay. And so, um, yeah, I, while I have been using mostly Badger Bore brushes over the past uh, a month or two, um, it was nice to return to the synth because it's just, you know, again, the this aspect of it, I do enjoy. And then also just the aspect that it it's just easier to work with um, in terms of loading, building the lather, kind of in every way. You know, th the only issue that I ran into was I was still kind of shaking it out as if I were using a bore or a badger that would retain some of the water. And so that was really the only issue I had was that I wasn't keeping enough water in it 
um, for the soap base. But we've got plenty of soap, as you can see, and so now it's just a matter of adding water until we get it to the consistency that we desire. This has kind of been the theme for this week, as I said, just adding water to this thing. And yeah, there are people out there, um, certainly people in my circles, who feel that the mutton tallow base is a better performer um, than the regular beef tallow. Um, honestly, I don't use sterling enough to compare the two, but I can't say that this is a very good base. And, um, you know, when you think about good value proposition, um, Sopers here in the U.S. Um, certainly has to be near the top. You know, you get 5.8 ounces of soap for, you know, 13, 14 bucks in some cases. And um, yeah, that's terrific value. The scents are strong like this one. And sometimes they're even original scents like this, you know. They do a lot of dupes, but they also have cool original ones like this. Um, and uh, yeah. So I'm going to keep working this in and I'll bring you back in and I'm about to start my uh, first pass with the razor. Today we're working with three days growth, which is one day more than usual, and we'll see how this razor treats us. Um, I have a Paul Silver Super Iridium here on its third use maybe in here. Um, so uh, this razor head, it has a really natural curve to it. Uh, like as soon as you, you know, leave the side, it starts to curve down. And then also the blade is curved. So for that reason, it does, there it is. Feels to me like riding the cap is the right way to go. Looking at the head geometry of this, it looks like it's um, slightly positive blade exposure. There is a there is a pretty decent gap underneath the blade, like where it doesn't sit flush with the base plate. And um, a buddy of mine, actually the buddy who sold me this handle and sold me the soap, um, he thought that this looked like a, a Maggard V3A head, um, but split in half. And it's possible that that razor head is made by Yaki for them. And it's also possible that there are, that Yaki makes that razor under a different name. And it's also possible that other Shaving vendors like Maggard um, have a you know different version of that razor for sale. So maybe it sounds like it to you, but or maybe it doesn't. But um, it's kind of loud, which doesn't scare me. It's also because we have three days growth. We're mowing down and. Um, to me, this is a comfortable razor. You just have to be careful. Don't push down because uh, it can bite you. I have had that. Getting under the nose like that is wonderful. It's a dream. And so even though this is half a DE, it reminds me of an SC and how much you have to keep the cap um, more up. And so to me, if I feel the razor start to be a little rough, I try to tilt the handle out and that seems to help.
because this razor handle is brass, it's got a decent heft to it. But it's not a tank like some big stainless razor, uh, stainless razor handle. All right, that'll do it for our first pass. Just letting the razor do the work. And yeah, that was great. Okay, rinse and then bring it back in for pass number two. Pass number two. The lather really settled down there in the brush between pass one and two. And sometimes you just gotta wait for that to happen. Um, yeah. Looks great. Okay, gonna do second pass now, mostly across some with the grain. Good second pass there. Um, again, trying to let the razor do the work. And um, I had a little issue under here this week going across like that. And so fortunately I learned from my mistake and just, I think the issue is when I come around, I start to rotate the razor a little bit to kind of go with the rotation. Um, but then by the time I get to the middle, it's not right. So you kind of have to reset. That's what I've noticed. Okay, gonna rinse and come back for final third pass. Third pass. Third and final pass against the grain, mostly. Still got a pretty good sound to it, even though. Even though the vast majority of the hairs have been removed. So again, that could mean that Sorry, just really trying to focus on this here. Um, could mean that it's just a loud razor, you know, could be the geometry of it causes it to sound louder. It could also mean there's some chatter, but to me, I haven't really had that issue. It's just been more a matter of um, keeping my pressure appropriate. And again, really only had that issue under my nose this week where it was especially bad, but everywhere else, I think a pretty, certainly efficient enough for me and I think comfortable enough, you know? Um, I definitely like razors on the milder spectrum and I wouldn't call this an aggressive razor. I wouldn't call it too aggressive for me even. Um, it just, you know, you, you have to be smart with it. Um, so I guess let's go the other way here. And so take it from me, um, again, having some problems under here, I'm not gonna go crazy <laughs> trying to get it totally buffed out or anything. So it is, so I do think this presents a good option for people. Who have Maybe only ever use a DE, but want to feel what just one edge feels like. 
Um, Because there are a lot of people who are concerned about, well, you, don't you have to rinse twice as often? And it's like, yeah, you, um, you definitely do. But the nice thing about this is that because it's half a DE uh, blade, those DE shavers wouldn't have to go and get gem blades or get artist club or injector style. You could just see if you like the simplicity of just one edge versus two. And you know, to be honest, um, of course I'm a little biased because of how much I love gem razors, but people think nowadays that like two sides of the blade is standard, like a double edge is standard. I'm not so sure it shouldn't be the other way. Like why isn't it just one side, right? One side is like a straight razor, which is what originally started us, started us off and don't get me wrong, I understand why double edge is nice and why it has become the default. But, you know, in a classical sense, I, I think one edge is really the more uh, traditional thing to do. Um, so that's going to finish our shave today. I'm not really going to push it. Um, three passes was definitely plenty with this razor for me. Um, I'm not feeling any irritation really. Skin is feeling me just a touch dry, but that's not totally surprising. And um, what am I gonna use? Um, yeah, I think I'll go crazy, uh, use some splash. So I'll um, do my final rinse and then come back and talk to you over the post shave, after shave. For after shave today, we're gonna be pairing with a different Fougere, Weinstressa from Chateau and Lux. Um, yeah, this is a nice Fougere scent as well. This one has a prominent white grape note which you can definitely detect. And this splash, the, uh, unfortunately it's been discontinued. Now, Declaration Grooming makes all of the Chateau looks splashes in the Declaration aftershave base, but you can still find these old bottles from CL going around. And um, this has a nice bit of menthol to it, which I always forget about. <laughs> so, I'm feeling the menthol now and it's not um, super high or anything, but it's a surprise for somebody like me who doesn't use menthol very much. And actually the scent of the menthol lends itself well to the scent, I think, because uh, of the white grape, something about the minty smell kind of works well with it. So that's something. All right, so that was our show today. Again, focusing on a couple brands that are super popular in our hobby, but for one reason or another, I haven't really reviewed that much. Um, okay, let's go front to forward here. So we used Sterling Soap Co. Varen, uh, Dutch for fern. And definitely an interesting Fougere scent, uh, different than, what I, than I would have expected. And that's, and that's exactly, you know, I got exactly what I came for in that sense. Um, this was an original scent and it has some familiar things in terms of being a Fougere, but it also has its own unique things. And that's what we should be, uh, hoping for out of all of our, um, you know, uh, scent makers in the hobby, right? Um, I, anyone can do a dupe scent with the simple pre-blend, but doing something like this, and that really takes work. And um, yeah, so I would encourage you to check out Varian. It was a labor of love, I think, if it took years to make it happen. And uh, it's very cool that now it's offered to the public, right? Um, okay, the Yaki Half DE SE Razor you saw had no issues whatsoever um, today. I kind of learned during the week, um, there's a little bit of a learning curve in terms of the angle, especially coming from DE shaving. But uh, again, it does remind me more of an SE in that way, in terms of the angle. And finally, the Yaki Rainbow Synthetic. Um, again, the, the handle I think looks better in person than it does in the pictures. In pictures it can look kind of gaudy and not particularly appealing, but it's actually very well done, uh, especially considering the price. And um, that's what I would say about all these products is for the price, it's hard to complain um, about any of these. So um, that's something. Um, okay, I think that's gonna wrap us up for today. Thank you all so much if you made it this far, as always, you're awesome. And next week, I'm probably gonna use a vintage DE of some sort. I've got plenty that I'd like to revisit or visit for the first time. And so, yeah, that's probably what will happen. Uh, but for now, this has been HG Shaves. Thank you all so much for watching. See you again next time. Bye-bye.